Who said 4K gaming is not achievable? Today I'm going to debunk that and at the same time introduce you to the BenQ Mobius EX3210U. The monitor, as its name suggests, is a 4K 32-inch flat-screen monitor that supports a refresh rate of 144Hz and 98% of the DCI-P3 color gamut for all your picture and video editing nerds out there. It also has a response time of 1 milliseconds with a peak brightness of 600 nits. The back is what I like the most about this monitor because it has a stylish sci-fi look with RGB strips which you can adjust based on a couple of modes. And not to forget the dual 2 watt speakers and a 5 watt subwoofer tuned by Travolo. Now, as for the ports, it actually has two HDMI 2.1 ports, one display port 1.4, a headphone jack, a USB type B port, and four USB type A ports. While it is a HDR600 display, it also supports HDRI with multiple modes for gaming, cinema, and display. Gaming will give you better contrast, while cinema will brighten up the darker areas, and display kinda adds a warm tint to the screen. Okay, okay, I know, I know. You wanna know what is like gaming on this monitor, right? Well, I just got one thing to say. It's so good. So I tried Elden Ring, which looks fantastic and really brings out how grim the game is with the colors on the HDRI gaming mode. And even Spider-Man on the PS5 looks vibrant, especially when you're swinging through the city at night. I also tried Forza 5 in 4K and it looks fantastic, especially when it comes to the car's detail. And the vibrancy of the monitor really brings out the different parts of Mexico. Okay, so I know that some of you think that 4K gaming is not achievable on a PC, especially with current hardware. But what we seem to forget is that NVIDIA and AMD have their own super sampling technology. One is called DLSS and the other is FSR. While NVIDIA is ahead of the pack with proven results, AMD is not far behind with the current FSR 2.0. The jump in performance is quite staggering. So what you need to understand is how these super sampling technologies work. It natively runs the game at a lower resolution but uses upscaling technology to run games at the targeted frame rate. In this case, that's 4K. Prior to this, the issue was that technology was not perfect, especially with thin lines like fences and hair. It was pointless that your games are in 4K but there was so much of artifacting happening, it kind of ruins the experience. AMD, while was behind, garnered more support because they made FSR open source. So that means that anyone who was making a game could slap that puppy in without even going through any hoops. And most importantly, it works on NVIDIA graphic cards and even Intel integrated graphics. Now of course, NVIDIA saw this as a massive threat because DLSS required you to have an NVIDIA card. So they were quick to improve DLSS by fixing these issues with the thin lines. Now I'm pretty sure if you follow NVIDIA on Facebook, you will see that many videos they have released compares games with DLSS on and off. And it might seem too good to be true. So I wanted to see if that was the case. So I tried Back for Blurred with DLSS on this Mobius monitor and I was quite shocked that with high graphics and DLSS set to quality, it pulled off 80 to 90 FPS in 4K. Now Forza 5 does not have DLSS, but it does have FSR. I locked the frame rates to 72 FPS because I find it weird playing non-first person shooter games at such a high frame rate and the frame rates never went below 72. Mind you, it only has FSR 1.0, so it's quite impressive that older tech still works just fine. Then we have the notorious Cyberpunk 2077, which with DLSS set to quality and ray tracing set to ultra, I got about 30 FPS. Turning off ray tracing, and that number goes up, and it gets close to 60 FPS. Again, Cyberpunk 2077 is not a game I recommend for benchmarking, but just in case you wanted to know. So yes, I talked a lot about super sampling technology and how it could help us achieve 4K gaming. And some of you might say that it is not true 4K. And that's true, no doubt about that. But the question is, do you take numbers as the standard or your own eyes. But if that's still your argument, then let me remind you that graphic card technologies are just gonna get better from here. Imagine this, right now, you can play the games that I mentioned at, at very playable frame rates. Once the new cards come out, don't you think that those numbers will just go up? 
Also, rumor has it that the performance of the 40 series will double that of the 30 series. So those numbers, while might not be doubled, it could still offer a significant boost to 4K gaming. Because remember, the less work the upscaler needs to do, the closer we will be to native 4K resolution. As for consoles, well, they do not have any problems. Sony and Microsoft have proven that the next-gen consoles are capable of 4K 120Hz, and with Game Pass now available to the majority of Asia, and what seems to be Xbox Game Pass Ultimate coming in the horizon, with the EX3210U, you could have your computer, Xbox, and PS5 all hooked up at once to play everything in 4K. Finally, breaking the need of picking and choosing different types of console, and finally, unifying gaming as a whole. So staring at a monitor too long is definitely not good for your eyes. We know because we spoke to a professional, and even she said that, yeah, you should be taking some breaks. But it's pretty hard, right? Especially when you're working. So it's good to know that this monitor comes with BenQ's eye care technology, which controls the ambient lighting depending on your surroundings, and it also has blue light protection. So yeah, for those of you who are interested, the BenQ Mobius lineup doesn't only comprise of this monitor. It also has other monitors with different sizes, refresh rates, and whether you want it to be curved or flat screen. Personally, I like flat screen monitors. But the important thing is, is that the BenQ Mobius monitors come with three years of warranty and an on-site pickup service. Let me know what you think about this monitor in the comments below. And I also want to know, have any of y'all actually played 4K gaming using the super sampling technology, regardless if it's from Nvidia or AMD? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, while you're there, I mean, I don't have to tell you what to do, right? You know what to do. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.